In this episode, the Oak Island team takes a step back for the Dumas Contracting Company team to begin drilling. The company is all set up and more than ready to begin the task. Is there a chance of new discoveries? What challenges did the team conquer to reach their goal? And most importantly, where does the buried treasure lie? Stay tuned as we continue the search for the long buried treasure. Early in the day, the drilling company begins the operation by making plans to deepen the garden shaft as far as it can go. The drilling involves draining the flooded water out of the garden shaft for about six hours, pulling out debris and artifacts, adding wood sets, and ensuring the tunnel underground is clear enough to be explored. It seems the first part of the operation is welding a very strong and effective tool known as the hammer grab, which weighs over three tons and is used for excavation. The team's plan after the excavation is to construct new wooden levels at about eight feet in an attempt to connect to the confirmed yet unexplored tunnel. The presence of the tunnel has been confirmed through different pieces of artifacts found during the Oak Island team's previous drilling. So far, some of the water pumped out has been seen and tested to contain evidence of gold and other materials. However, something stands out from their observation. The gold-dusted water did not seem to have its source in the garden shaft, but in a completely different area west of it, known as the baby blob. From past research and excavation attempts, it was discovered that the baby blob had the highest concentration of metal materials and other artifacts compared to other areas of the money pit. Overall, the team's expectancy during and after the extension of the shaft area is quite high. Many are hopeful, excited about the findings to be made, and curious about their origin. From previous observations of the land and maps of the island, the team was able to detect the right direction for their excavation operation. The garden shaft was the best area to start the extension horizontally and at any height. With this in process, up to about 80 feet is open for excavation, exploration, and observation which is a large expanse underground and promises a lot of artifacts during the process. One thing is for sure during this whole operation, there will be positive outcomes, despite the challenges the team will encounter at some point. Another positive outlook is that some barriers can be easily overcome with the team's partners at Dumas Contracting Limited in the case where there is no access to areas with high concentrations of metal materials the drilling company comes in handy and aids extensions as desired. With luck, no treasure has the chance of being forgotten, and the chances of unveiling the lost treasure are higher than ever. The Dumas team begins the task on a positive note, ready to make discoveries. A few hours into the day's operation, some team members gathered, as usual, in the war room. But this was to have a meeting with a representative from IDN Technologies. The aim of the meeting was to have a briefing on the scientific reports of the money pit. Most of Oak Island's team seems anxious about what the reports might be. The report was essentially practical, and the ID on technology team went to great lengths to ensure its accuracy. The technology team deployed about 14 sensors into five boreholes in the money pit area. Most of the sensors were as far as 80 feet to 250 feet below the surface ground, which is very, very deep, but far, much closer to the tunnel. The investigative operation was not done recently, but years ago, as long ago as 2021, and it took almost two years to complete fully detailed research. This means the results are not based on short-term observations, but on careful research and testing to conclude the report. From the report, it seems the sensors, when feet deep underground, could detect subatomic particles traced to be muons. According to the representative, there were specifics to search for, such as tunnels that cross-cut at the money pit, suits, voids, and unusual activities occurring underground. The reports were presented visually, displaying the density of the money pit. According to the 3D image, yellow is the area with neutral density, the blue dots are areas with low density, and the high-density areas are orange and red. By interpretation, high-density areas are most likely to contain treasures, while low-density areas are tunnels, voids, or vaults. Overall, there is a positive outcome based on the image. A high density was found west of the garden shaft at about 65 feet below the money pit, where the baby blob should be. 
However, at much deeper feet underground, over 112 feet, there is a low density area. The results leave the team in a conflict of interest due to the chances of not being able to access the area with high density because of the ongoing operation of Dumas Limited. Fortunately, this is not the only area with high density. About 85 feet SW of the garden shaft and 230 feet below the money pit, an anomaly was discovered and found to have a significantly higher density than other areas. This information dangles a possibility in everyone's minds. It seems there is a chance that Oak Island has more than one treasure. This fact has never been a thought for past and present searchers until now. The team is willing to look more into what has been discovered and agrees on a careful drilling operation that will perhaps unlock another mystery of the island. As the minute progressed, another report was given on a low-density anomaly that Oak Island's team seemed to have explored. What makes it unique from other low-density concentrated areas is that it seems to cover an important site thought to be a myth. Aladdin's cave has been long hidden by the void until now, despite the efforts that have been put in place to find it. Only a year ago, the L-15 borehole was drilled and a large carbon was located at the SW of the garden shaft. There was evidence of human activities and carvings in the cave, and it was measured to be about 40 feet long and 12 feet wide. When questioned about the result of the water associated with Aladdin's cave, it was reported to contain heavy metal materials by consistency, and the water seems to contain some gold. If the cave was not found before, it certainly has been found now because all evidence points to it being the correct location of the mythical place, which is real and very much in existence. Edeon Technologies' report has caused a game-changer and a significant advancement in finding the treasure. Now they have accurate locations, specific targets, and a plan that guides the drilling. This is a very positive outcome that makes the years of observation very productive Luckily, L-15 can be drilled right away as it is nowhere close to the garden shaft and the drilling can commence as soon as it is planned. The meeting was a great success as it confirmed what most of the crew were thinking, and there was indeed more than one treasure at and around the money pit area. I think that we can agree that advanced technology played a major role in unveiling many of Oak Island's mysteries. On the morning of a new day, the Dumas Contracting Company continues drilling deep in the garden shaft. Only this time, they are set to excavate L-14, Aladdin's cave. On the other hand, archaeologists at Lot 5 continue to dig deeper into the stone wall of the rectangular depression constructed to keep the treasures hidden underground. As expected, some discoveries have been made, and some of them are dated as far back as the pre-discovery of Oak Island and its buried treasures. Early into sifting, the crew had a new discovery, a piece of metal, speculated to be either a staple or a chain link. There might be a few pointers as to why the remains of the supposed chain link were found. There is a theory of the object splitting after being lifted or bonded to objects, possibly treasure, and locking it underground before constructing the stone wall. There is also the possibility that something unexpected and probably more complicated occurred in the area. Where did it originate from? What was its purpose? And who were the crafters? These questions would most likely be answered by the proposed CT scan of the artifact. However, one detail that is certain is that Lot 5 was not merely residential, but, from evidence, had some sort of military activity, either as a result of conflict or was used as a training ground. The archaeologists continue their careful digging and sifting to discover more unique artifacts that could eventually provide details of the activities in the area. Back in the money pit area, another part of the team begins to work on the debris removed. The team's metal detector expert and historian joined to dig out metal materials from the debris. Over a year ago, Gary discovered several strong signals of metal in the thick and murky water, but was not able to get as much information due to the search being suspended. However, what was sure was that there was indeed several evidences and indications that the area had a high concentration of precious metals. 
The operation this time around has many more promises and fewer restrictions, which means more results. Not long after the scanning, there were several beeps from the detector, indicating the presence of precious metals, as expected. Soon enough, a large piece of metal, suspected to be a wedge, was found amidst the mud and debris. The metal wedge is thought to be a part of an axe, and the speculation is most likely accurate. However, why would a piece of metal from an axe be over 80 feet below the surface ground? Was it used in the construction of tunnels, or did it break while digging to bury the precious metals? If this theory is in any way accurate, it seems the metal wedge has its origin dated as far back as 1735 and might hold details on the life, culture, and technology of those who resided in the area. The artifact was sealed and kept to be scanned at the lab for analysis. The duo suspended their search until the debris was dry enough to dig through properly. Well into the day, the drilling of borehole L-14 is still in operation, and with every moment, the team keeps getting closer and closer to Aladdin's cave. At 142 and a half feet, the void is finally reached, and the team agrees to keep drilling until something is found that indicates the high-density area, which is unusual at such a location. During the earlier digging, the metal evidence was found over 160 feet below. But as of now, the void seems to be closer and at a much higher level than is expected. Could there be a possible reason for this new development, or is the void simply where it is supposed to be? Fortunately, the answers to the confusion could be found in the 3D presented by Ideon Technologies. It seems that some part of the roof of the carven is much higher than expected, and from the displayed image, the cave's carven seems to take an irregular shape. From Marty Laguna's theory, there seems to be a chance that Aladdin's cage was the origin storage vault or that it is an extension of where the money pit collapsed. There are so many variables and possibilities for how it came to be. However, it is expected that there are some located within the area. Continuing in the drilling at about 148 feet below, it was reported that there was nothing but open space, which indicates that the void had possibly been found. In general, the drilling of L-14 was encouraging enough to continue the search. The next task of the team is to pass cameras, scanners, and sonar devices several feet into the hole to record and observe the activities and structure of the soon-to-be-found cave. For now, the intent is to leave the hole bare so it can be dry and clean enough for the devices to be planted. Following the start of a new day, Dumo representatives immediately continue drilling hoping to make it past the void area, while the rest of Oak Island's team goes to check out the progress at Lot 5. Also, this time, areas with possible artifacts have been marked with flags as per usual practice, and the goal is to dig through them in hopes of discovering any artifacts. The search starts on a good note, as the first flag spot pulled was detected to have a high concentration of metal materials. A huge lump of soil and hard stone were first pulled out to reach the target. After careful sorting and digging, an old coin was found and speculated to be much more ancient than the previously discovered coins. The coin seems heavy and real enough to pass as the original version. The artifact, like the others, has been sealed to be tested and analyzed at the lab. Hopefully, the results prove the origin is accurate. It seems that every excavation artifact points more and more to Lot 5 being more than an acre westward on the island, and might be directly related to the money out area, possibly an extension of it. At the start of another brand new day, all the teams diligently continue their tasks at the garden shaft and of course, the Aladdin cave. Other team members split into tasks, some at the interpretive center, to get reports on the artifacts found in previous days. The artifact was shown to archeologist Laird Navin, who confirmed it was indeed a piece of LED and most likely a bag seal from the ancient era, about the 13th century, when LED bag seals were used as fasteners for industrial and military packages. Not long ago on Lot 32, an LED bag seal was discovered to be a compatible match to the 14th century LED barter token, and also an LED cross from the same century, found at Smith's Cove. To prove his assessment, Laird explained that in the 13th century, the seals were made from two LED circle pieces and stamped on as evidenced by the cut section on the metal. 
There was also machine analysis conducted by Emma using the X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, a form of radiation to determine the origin and elemental composition of objects. According to the analysis, it seems that the LED seal is not 100% pure. It has a bit of iron impurities embedded in it and has little copper composition. There was also a report on the bag seals. Unfortunately, the results do not correspond. However, there was a unique find that made things a bit hopeful. The top of the now unidentified artifact had strange letters and markings inscribed on it. The most visibly seen is the letters CARE, while the other letters were not so recognizable. It seems the interpretive team went their own way to find a match for the letters. The sample had the inscription, I lie old Parkers, London. The seal belonged to a cloth parker from the 1700s, who evidently packed clothes into bales that weighed about half a ton before sealing and shipping, and it is quite possible that the same might be for the seal found in Lot 5. There is a huge chance that some materials, such as military uniforms, arms, maps, food items, medications and the like, were packed, sealed, and shipped to Oak Island at one point. The company was stated to be Army Parkers, which then refers back to Lot 5, most likely being a military base or some secret arms operation on the island. So far, the company's century has not been confirmed, but is stated to be closely dated to 1808, as evidenced by an entry's address. What can be confirmed is that the seal is much older than it looks, especially with the use of the letter I instead of J in the inscription. The I represents John before it went out of fashion due to language evolution. However, this practice can be traced back to 1524. It seems the island keeps providing evidence to solve its mystery. There is a possibility that in the 1500s, there were some activities between the British military and the Parkers. The question is, what exactly was delivered? There is also another argument that a searcher of the lost treasures left the seal and might have tools, supplies, medical treatments, or whatever requirements they had at the moment. The guess is that the possibility of unveiling the identity might be difficult. However, literally and figuratively, we might never know. Back at Lot 5, Jamie Kuba confirms that the archaeologists are indeed making headway in carefully digging the rectangular depression. However, a new project has been put in place, scanning the area near the rectangular feature to search for artifacts using genomics EM38B, N electromagnetic induction instrument from the archaeological department. The device functions to detect how the force of pressure affects the ground. Activities such as erosion, changes in soil layers, flooding and fire affect the soil. However, if the evidence is washed away or even close to extinction, there is still a chance of finding out what happened at the location. Using its magnetic poles, the EM38B detects buried metal materials, wooden and stone structures, and destructive or disturbing effects created by human activities. During a run trial of EM38B, Jamie was alerted to strange activities in an area. The area is quite close to the circular depression, and maybe the location might mean something and both areas are somehow connected. Beforehand, there were selected areas to explore, and they were lined with ropes about 50 centimeters apart. This means the breath can easily be checked to see how large the anomaly is, how long the length is, and its precise location. With this feature, the team is not just searching blindly, but in accurately targeted areas. Another morning sun sets, and the team prepares for the day's task. The day begins with a video conference with Craig Tester and the rest of the team. The meeting's purpose was to read the carbon dating report of wood samples collected over a week ago at the C5N27 borehole at a depth of 100 feet. The wood was a sample from a newly discovered tunnel found directly east of the garden shaft, extending into the baby blob. Subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the video so far. According to the reports, a wood chip was carbon dated and analyzed to be within the range of 53.2% from 1726 to 1811, 25.5% from 1644 to 1694, and 16.7% from 1917 to 1950. Simply put, 
The wood seems to belong to an outer edge tree and was cut down around the same period. With this information, the wood seems to date back to pre-searcher periods, indicating that the tunnel is an original construction, not an extension or work for a searcher looking for treasures, but the original depositors of the island's treasure. This is amazing news for the Oak Island team. It confirms that they are indeed in the right part of drilling the C5N27 borehole and will soon have full access to the tunnel. Maybe this tunnel is an extension of the money pit or a passageway to the money pit. Over time, it will be revealed. Another theory is that the size of C5N27 likely exceeds what it is thought to be, particularly the length. Undoubtedly, the money out and the tunnel at C5N27 are closely related and just maybe in the process of deepening the garden shaft, it might lead to a connection to the tunnel and, overall, an entirely new discovery. The reports on C5N27 are more than satisfactory. It give hope to the search ahead and the definite phenomenal discoveries to be made. The Oak Island team seems excited to continue its search for the lost treasure. Only this time, they are several steps closer to exploring its home and hopefully unboxing the treasures.